Hi, I'm Dan McClellan, your Chargers Wrap reporter for CBSSports.com, and this is the Chargers Wrap Report Recap Show, where every single week I take a look at three of my reports, break them down, and give you some insight going into each week's game. This week, the 4-2 and two Chargers travel to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs, who are 3-3. Three and three. It's a battle for first place on Monday Night Football. I have a lot of concerns going into this week's game. Here are a look at some of them. The Chargers' pass rush may have a difficult time getting to Chiefs quarterback Matt Castle because San Diego is down to just three healthy outside linebackers, Antoine Barn, Travis LeBoy, and Daryl Gamble. Castle has only been sacked ten times this year. You don't get him in a lot of situations where you can just gear up and go rush him, Coach Norv Turner said. He does a great job of throwing the ball away. Next man up is the Chargers' motto this week as they are struggling through injuries. Daryl Gamble is one of those next men up. He's the only Charger player who is an undrafted free agent to make the active roster this year. Gamble is likely going to see his first career start at outside linebacker this week because Larry English broke his foot against the Jets and was placed on IR, and Sean Phillips is out with a foot injury. The Chargers are down to three healthy outside linebackers, Gamble, Antoine Barnes, and Travis LeBoy, who also will likely start. These three linebackers are going to need to find a way to get some pressure on Castle, who's only been sacked 10 times. If the Chargers can't get pressure on Castle, he's going to pick apart their defense, and it's going to be a very long Monday night game. Quarterback Phillip Rivers has thrown nine interceptions this season and only seven touchdown passes. This has put him on pace for a career-low 82.3 passer rating. Many have speculated Rivers is hiding an injury, and that is why he has struggled. Rivers, however, denied he is injured. I am as healthy as I have been through six weeks, Rivers said. I am doing the best I can to lead a 4-2 and two team. The good news, Philip Rivers says he's healthy. And that means he should be able to start playing better anytime soon. Because in all accounts and purposes, he is having an offseason. Even Philip Rivers would fest to that. Four times this year, he's thrown two interceptions in the game, including last week against the Jets. When the Chargers play the Chiefs on Monday Night Football last season in Week 1, Rivers fumbled the ball two times in their loss. If the Chargers to beat the Chiefs this year on Monday Night Football, simply put, Rivers needs to do a better job of protecting the football. The Chargers led the Jets 21-10 at halftime last Sunday, only to lose 26-21. There is nothing drastic that needs to change, quarterback Philip Rivers said. We just need to put a complete game together. We still haven't put one together, and we are 4-2. and two. If San Diego does not play a complete game against the Chiefs, they will likely fall to 4-3. and three. Last week, I told you all the reasons why I thought the Chargers would go into New York and beat the Jets. And for half a football game, they made me look like a genius. They led 21-10 to 10 in half, only to fall completely flat in the second half and lose 27-21. to 21. On Monday, Phillip Rivers says the Chargers haven't played a complete game this season, and that's true. The problem is they usually, going back a couple years now, do not play complete games. It's either a really good first half or it's a really good second half. Now, they've won a lot of football games when they've only played half a game. And though it may be a cliche that you need to play a full 60 minutes to win a game, this is really starting to tr hold true for the Chargers, whose schedule gets a lot more difficult after this. This team needs to start learning how to play a full game and to do that soon if they're going to continue to win. If they fall to the Chiefs this week, they will lose full control of first place, and they may not get it back if they don't start playing complete games. Admittedly, the mood was pretty somber here on Monday following the Jets' loss. But it didn't stay that way. In large part to two fundraisers, the Chargers players took part in. On Monday night was J Bowl, which raises funds for the Jammer Family Foundation to help out San Diego foster children and the Pro Players Foundation to help out patients with muscular dystrophy. Then on Tuesday morning, Charger players sold newspapers to help raise funds for patients at Rady's Children's Hospital. Here are some highlights of the events. You have the support of the of, of pretty much everybody because everybody you know everybody loves football everybody loves the Chargers we have we have great guys on our team who, who, who show up to to all events now you know regardless of his mind or regardless of his shocks or anybody's on the team we show up and we support one another so you know we're a family and uh and we show that by you know by showing up to to, to things like this speaking of families you have three boys and they're starting to play football how are they doing 
Uh, doing great. My my oldest is uh is a beast. <laughs> Jock is that right? Jock. We taking over this bowling alley right now. <laughs> we dominating everybody. What? What the did you other host? What did table? you drink when you were as a child? Man, I, I ate all my God. candy. I tell you, man. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Yeah, he's got me beat. I'm having a great time. You know, being out here, a little competitive edge to it too. You know, you go up to these cars and uh, try to get the, that one dollar. Some people. Say no. Some people are just willing, hanging the money out the window. So it's fun uh, trying to get as much money as possible for uh, the Children's Hospital. One dollar. All right, I'm with Jock Cesare, who last night turned my microphone off at J Bowl. So I have to quickly ask him. <laughs> He's gonna do it again. Give me that mic. <laughs> What's going on? We're over here on the corner of Frazy and and Friars, and uh, we're just you know doing some work. We're saving lives. All right, Raiders Children's Hospital, 2011. We love this whole event right now. It's, it's great. We got Victor out here. We got the Charger girls. We got Charger players. We got Dan over here. And then, <laughs> we're having fun. So come on out. Give us the money. And, and last night, Pro Players Association. Just talk a little bit about that. How much? You know, what what did you do last night with Jay Bull there? Uh, you know, we were raising money for uh, Duchamp muscular dystrophy for St. Pasquale kids. We were raising money to uh, uh, feed people during the holidays. So I mean, it was a great event. A lot of people came out. A lot of Charger players came out. So we had a lot of fun. Now, I, I interviewed Darren Bennett, but my microphone was off, But so we're going to talk to you about that real quick. Sure. Darren Bennett's son, uh, Will, has muscular dystrophy. A year ago had surgery, but last night was at the event looking good. Makes you know must, must I, make you feel good. I've, I've known that kid for nine years now, and uh, he's just a fighter. He's always been a fighter. He has the spirit of his dad and his mom, and, and uh, you know, he's never going to give up. And, and, it's, and it's great to see the, the progress that he's made and, and the fight that he still has, you know? Well, you've asked me about being a fighter. You know, we know that what happened on Sunday wasn't what we wanted to have happen. But I think the energy out here, the players coming together, the excitement, this team's a fighter, and we're going to turn things around. You know, we, we love the city of San Diego. We love the support that the San Diego you know, community gives us. And we just want to give back any way we can. And uh, we're going to try and give back by winning on the football field. While those fundraisers were great because they helped people in need, they also served the cause of bringing together players off the field. And that translates to how well they play together on the field. I truly believe that. The Chargers have done a better job in their community outreach than probably any other team in the NFL. And I think that is what's helped them overcome some of the obstacles they have faced in the last few years. Overcoming slow starts, turning things around, and all of a sudden pulling off a bunch of wins in a row. Last week was a tough week against the Jets, and they do have a challenge against the Chiefs this week. But I do believe, despite all the obstacles, the Chargers can go into Kansas City and pull out a victory. Once again, I am your Chargers rap reporter for CBSSports.com. Visit CBS Sports nearly every single day for your latest Chargers information. You can also follow me on Twitter at San Diego Sports or subscribe to this YouTube page. Thanks, and I'll see you next week.